every week. It's about this moment that I, when I realize that I've got to say the intro uh, and I try and think about what to say. So hello and welcome to another episode of I Have Notes, a show where we talk all things creative, animation, and Issa moved. Uh, with me, no, don't talk yet. With me is my amazing co-host who moved. Isa Badiola. Hey. Oh. Hello. I moved. What a different background. Wow. It's like the screen unfolded. I'm oh. Isa Badiola. Thanks for the introduction, Carrie. Uh, with so, so. us are some of our special, special guests. Uh, one, our, my shirt counterpart, uh, Aaron Wynn, is here with us. Hello, friend. Yes. And we Brand have new shirts. Brand new shirts. Control all. And we also have- I really have... want to select- Oh God, sorry, never mind. <laughs> You're right, <ruined it>, Carrie. <laughs> and we also have other very special guests, uh, Luis Paco Vesquez. Hey, hey yay. guys. It's Paco. Thanks for having me. I got a, I got a super Paco. old shirt. Whoa. Whoa. Marketing will be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I sure want to select all of those shirts from our store. <laughs> <laughs> and how do we Paco get there, Vesquez. Carrie? <laughs> <laughs> what? How do we get to the store? Oh, to our store? Yeah. Uh, it's probably like roosterteeth.com slash store. Yeah. Oh, God, I, I hope it's store actually... roosterteeth.com. Fuck. <laughs> We're very uh, good. Register the other one real quick. We're very good employees. <laughs> we oh, yeah, definitely don't go to roosterteeth.com slash store. Don't do that. Uh, but store.roosterteeth.com <laughs> has amazing shirts like those select all shirts. And this Ruby Eyes shirt. Uh, and a long time ago, the shirt Paco had, but I don't think you can get that anymore. And that's why it's important that you get shirts like right away. <laughs> Do it now. Right now, it's only Paco. Oh, oh, I've got the corgi oh, pill in the background too. What? Oh, yeah. No, that's, also, a, uh, that's an exclusive just for me. Yeah. <laughs> also, Paco, for a second, I thought that chair in the background was like a ghost. <laughs> what? Uh, what chair are you talking? It's funny, I know it probably won't pick up in the recording too much, but it is uh, raining at like half of our houses. Yes. Um, so it's all very spooky themed uh, for the end of July. Oh my God, it's almost Halloween August. Halloween in July. It's almost August. You know what that means? Halloween in August. Yeah, so I actually don't know. I don't, I don't actually know what that means. Nah. It's almost it's, Labor Day? I don't... It's my birthday month. <gasps> oh, yeah. It's my birthday Ooh. month too. It's, oh. That's right. Paco's birthday is in the 20... Eight. Almost. That was close. Uh, uh, Twenty six? Closer. Four. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Eighteen. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. <laughs> Interesting uh, choice to go by two on that one. It worked out for you, but hey, I got wonder there if I could do three that. guesses. It's all, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try to guess yours, Isa, so you're already doing a lot better than me, so oh, okay. <laughs> it's the fourteenth. That was a trick, just to get you to say. Exactly. That's how you do it, I wonder, I'm hey, wanna... now I'm just looking to see uh, when the episode comes out around that time so we can just go ahead and start planning. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, the 14th will be uh, for uh, public, yes. uh, not next week's episode, but the week after. So, birthday episode. Birthday episode. <laughs> All about me, <laughs> baby. Yeah. <laughs> Should have a, a crazy party. Everybody's invited. <laughs> Paco Zoom says <birthday>. sarcastically. <laughs> I I don't want a Zoom birthday. I think oh, I think sorry, I'd rather a just Google Hangout birthday. No, I don't. I think I'd just rather just just not do it oh. personally. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. How do you feel about it, Isa? Because I've been conflicted, birthday? going back and forth. Well, about are you gonna birthday. do anything for your birthday? I'm turning thirty. Which Whoa. is gonna be a You're fucking old. That's I know. exciting, Paco. Thirty it's okay, thirties are the new twenties is what they say. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, because be... millennials control the narrative now. So <laughs> <laughs> it'll be a it'll be a hell of a way to welcome thirty, I guess, just by being yeah. home. That's true, yeah. Uh I don't know. My sister asked me that too, and I was like, uh mm, I don't know. Normally I would like to do stuff, but um I think just by how everything is i'm like i don't know we'll probably just i don't know buy something fancy <laughs> hey that's that's pretty cool it's better than <laughs> something not fancy true i'm definitely 
that person who wants to uh, put people on blast when it's their birthdays. So do the same for me. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Paco, with it, with it being, th- have you, I mean, I feel like this is the age old question. Uh, do you, do you feel like it's going to be a dirty 30 or a flirty 30? Ooh, I like that. <laughs> well, uh, that's right. It might be neither. <laughs> So, for, I Hopefully, as long as you it's like a Jeremy chance? thirty, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna be uh, real lame and admit to you all on the show that I don't really know the difference between those two. I don't I don't think there actually is much of one. I think they just both rhyme. Oh, okay. Well, I then, mean, like uh, uh, flirty you know. thirty then. All right. Ooh, that's not, that's it's it's like a hint of innocence still. <laughs> it's good. I like that. That you know? feels on that feels on brand, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. But you're, yeah, it's like you know, you're you're you know, you're giving like a little wink, but you're not like. I don't More know. Like where, a... I don't know where I was gonna go with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're doing like a little teehee. <laughs> well, but not like flashing a, them. Let's hope it's not a gurney thirty. Oh, oh boy, that went that went quick. <laughs> no. spooky, spooky episode. episode. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the weather has me in a spooky mood. Yeah. <laughs> As Aaron said, Halloween in July. Halloween in July. <laughs> you can't wanna, say it like that. I want to put some googly eyes on, on my ghost now. That's a good ghost. Name. <laughs> how's uh, uh, how's everybody's week weekends been? How's everybody doing? I moved. You moved. moved. <laughs> I'm like it sucks because I'm not fully unpacked. Um, the last time I moved, I had a whole week off just to do it. And that was actually like a godsend because it was so nice to just have that time to organize and reorganize mm-hmm. everything and really get everything to the level that you want. And then go into work and be like, y'all, I have a new place. I just moved. Everything's great. And then now it's like, oh, my God, I, all I see is mess. <laughs> yep. It took me like three to four weeks to fully unpack my whole apartment in my Ooh. latest move yeah uh and i took i took two days off and that's obviously was not nearly enough yeah you've unpacked it's definitely everything? Yes, say what you've unpacked everything yeah finally wow. yeah Good like job. this weekend was the final weekend like everything is kind of more or less in a place I've been in, I've been in my house for almost three years and I still have boxes. That oh, that gives me anxiety. Oh. No. <laughs> that gives yeah. me secondhand anxiety. Ugh. Well, I, I I have this dumb problem. I never take time off to move just because it's like I just I'm dumb. You brave and, uh, man. So I, I always with every move I end up with like one or two boxes that was here's all the shit that I probably should just throw away, but I need to be out today, so I'm gonna throw in a box. Oh. And then oh, I put it in yeah. a closet. And then it stays there. And my entire closet's filled with those at this point. Oh. And I hate everything. Can't relate. Really. <laughs> yeah. You just need, you just need help, someone to help you uh, throw stuff away, like me. Yeah. Next time you move, let me know. Yeah. You can well, be my, uh, is, it, is it Marie Kondo? Is that what her name oh, is? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, you can tell me, does it spark joy? Yeah. Yeah. And I'll be yeah. like, Paco, but I do, I do need that junk mail from the old apartment. And you can be like, no, you no. don't carry. Yeah, exactly. Does Can't the spark that. joy? <laughs> Issa, no. at, at, at any point, uh, maybe not seriously, but did, did you at least remotely consider keeping your old place to be the new office? <laughs> <laughs> so that you could live where you are now, but then go somewhere to work every day. Did you at least even consider it slightly? <laughs> That's a very funny, that's a very funny thought. I think I actually said it as a joke with my SO um, because we still have uh, a month left over. Um, oh shit. Just go and hang out. <laughs> Dude, you totally can. I could, but like part of the reason why we moved this early was uh, movers as well. Um, ah. So it was uh, all of the heavy stuff, i.e. our desks and things yes. that we would hate to like, moved out like let's not <laughs> that's fair yes. can i go over there when you're not there <laughs> to just get out of my fucking house and you do something like work hang somewhere out, else hang yeah. out on the carpet where there's that's no more fine. furniture <laughs> that's fine that's okay i'll do it <laughs> how about you aaron and paco how were your weeks they were good my mom visited me this weekend so Aww. that was lovely oh, seeing another human that I can actually have physical contact with. Oh, yay. So, got to experience a hug. Aww. And it sounds really dumb, but I was like, oh. Again, I live by myself. Like, I have my two cats, but they can't love me back the same way. 
Um, uh, so it's definitely... Those are fighting words, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, my cats are... They're doing something wrong because they won't fucking hug me back. Um, <laughs> they, took, they, they do take good pictures. They do. Mm. They're very photogenic. <laughs> Yeah, it was that was about my weekend. Very, very low key. Aww. That's a that's a good positive. That's yes. that's it was better than yeah, better than a lot of our like oh <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> past weeks. How about How's Paco you, Paco? doing? Yeah. Uh yeah, I had a pretty chill weekend. I feel your pain, Aaron, where you know, living on your own and just having two cats to oh, kind no. of pass the time. It's just like, yeah, I mean I love you, but you're I know you don't really <laughs> <laughs> a, you're a you're obliged way. to love me because I feed you and house you. Yeah. But uh, no, other than that, I, I, uh, I've i been playing Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, Ghost! <laughs> yeah. My new friend back there. And, uh, close, but okay. Damn. You should put the rice patty hat when, on. When, when, I, when I say I've been playing Ghost of Tsushima, I just actually put that blanket over my head and I go around like, ooh. Yeah. That's your only costume this year. <laughs> Sushi with a sword. Yeah. So you just you're throwing sushi at random people as they walk by. Yeah. But no, I played a lot of that because I needed a change after Last of Us 2, which was very good, but oh. very depressing. Oh, yeah, yes. I can imagine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh and I also watched uh this God Pilgrim this God Pilgrim cast did a read through of the movie, mm-hmm. like for oh, charity yeah, or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, I heard and, about that. Yeah, that was that was super fun if you liked that movie. I did what, like was that uh movie. was everyone there? No, uh, Chris Evans. <laughs> well, because it's Chris Evans was there, but whenever uh, what's his name Lee something Lee, oh, whenever yeah. the, whenever his character leaves the movie, he straight up leaves the call. He's like, "Okay, everybody, gotta go. I'm a busy Marvel guy." And uh, <laughs> and uh, at least he's there for a little bit, I guess. Yeah, so he he showed up for a little bit of it. And what's her name, Captain Marvel? Oh, Brie Larson. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Larson. yeah. Yeah, she was not there. Uh, I didn't all these fucking Marvel people. Yeah. She I was, know. She was the um the singer, uh, Scott's ex. And the yeah. NBS. Oh, I guess I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. yeah. It's so weird. It's wild yeah. how many superheroes are in that movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just Googled it. Uh, it was Lucas Lee. Lucas Lee. Lucas yeah. Lee. I'm so uh, they, Marvel guy. they actually had uh, Anna Kendrick, who plays Scott's sister, yeah. lead for yeah. Envy. So she oh, was cool. going back and forth, but it, it was really funny because... <laughs> Oh yeah, like, like, I am the... now this. I'm now the ex, not the sister. This is... Oh God! Yeah, because the, the, the please make point. that distinction. <laughs> yeah, the scene. Uh, yeah, like, like with the the vegan scene. Yeah, like in the the green room or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my so, God! I can't rewatch that movie. That's a fun movie. It's great. It's ten years old. Oh, Whoa! Oh, it could drink okay. now. Oh. <laughs> oh. I mean, not legally, but it could drink. <laughs> <laughs> My first thought after you said that, Paco, was like, oh, don't call us out like that. <laughs> Got it. I feel it, too. I feel old as hell. Yeah. Oh. I, I watched that movie, like, I think three times in theaters. I, I don't, it's not something I do very often. Wow. That was, like, one of the first times, I think it might have been the first time I went to a movie by myself. Just because I had seen what it. What a loser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'd seen it like twice with like different groups of people. And I was like, well, okay, that's everybody I know. I got to go again. I guess I'll just go again. I am also <laughs> looking at I'm very sad that it only apparently in the box office made half of its budget back. Oh, yeah, it didn't, I'm assuming it made a, a lot more later. Yeah. But, it did. Uh, it's considered a cult classic. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I see. I see. Okay. That's stupid. It's very good. Okay. What movies have you seen? the most times in in theaters oh good question uh, um, me easily promare i think i've said that several mm-hmm. times i've that's seen it at true. least i think four times in theaters <laughs> and i also carrie even though i called you a loser i also saw promare by myself twice so <laughs> twice <laughs> yeah you're double the loser <laughs> yeah, Wait, you don't have to remind me <laughs> it's not like golf it's actually the higher the more the, the more loser points you have the better in this <laughs> in this game uh, I'm uh trying to think. I, I think Scott Pilgrim or I, I say this with regret now, uh, uh, Blue People Avatar. <gasps> oh, wait, yeah, um, that, that actually because, would have been my answer too. Because I, I saw a, it a couple ooh. different formats. Hey, oh. yeah, I was gonna say no shame. It was it was a product yeah. of its of its time. It yeah. was a, a a cultural phenomenon. Everybody went to see it. Yeah, it, everybody and then did. Everybody it. promptly forgot about it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, until I think James I saw Cameron the makes first... the four sequels. <laughs> yeah. I think I saw the first Hobbit movie twice. 
because I saw it in like the, the was it HFR? Frames. Yeah, 48 frames a second. Thing. Yeah, and, oh, and okay. normal. It did not uh, look good. Well, to me, anyways. It was interesting. Yes. It was an experience. Sure. Would you do it again? No. Yep, yep. <laughs> I would not. I'm just like, I'm, I hate like how, I think we talked about this in another episode. Like I, I hate how precious I've become with my time when it comes to movies like if there's a chance i won't like it i'm like i'm not going to give that two and a yeah, half hours and there's no way that. i feel that oh um uh, i'm trying to think i think another movie i've seen oh, yeah. the most uh actually is uh mad max fury road Ooh. oh Ooh, yeah that's, that's a good one yeah i think that's, that's another a... one that i see, saw like three times I, I, I saw at least two two to three times pretty sure yeah. that's oh man i love that movie how the heck would i forget <laughs> It's, it's a good. great one i don't think i'm pretty sure carrie never saw that in the theater and i know that for a fact oh really? yeah because uh what? um you did you actually did you buy me the movie or did you just like you, i did we, i bought you yeah you did movie. you're really sweet yeah you're like you didn't see that theater so like the next day you came with like the blu-ray uh, and then we ended up like all watching it yeah it was really good it's a good movie it is it's really, really good. wholesome. It's a it's a good ass movie. I'm gonna go rewatch that now. That's my thing is like I there's a part of, like I actually I rewatched Scott Pilgrim like a couple months ago. Like I hate this rut that I've gotten in where like I I'm almost more likely to rewatch something that I know is yeah. good versus watch a new thing that I'm like you know eh, about. Well, I think I've read somewhere like even especially now where like the state of the world is like very chaotic. Literal and, shit. Uh, yeah, literal <laughs> shit. <laughs> um people are like more likely to like rewatch something they're familiar with just because it is like that comfort of knowing what's gonna happen and it's like oh you have that one semblance of like control in your life Perfect. yeah i think i read the same article which is like <sighs> especially anxious anxious people tend to rewatch yeah the same shows way. they've already seen over and over again because mm -hmm. no you don't surprises. have that anxiety of something surprising you you know what you're getting every yeah. time it's like yeah, exactly. comfort food i guess so uh i had this conversation recently with um my so about how if uh what is it i mentioned you a lot in this conversation aaron because <gasps> they went like it <laughs> if you asked me a few years ago if i would be that guy who watches youtube a lot i would have said no way <laughs> absolutely not but and i was like you know i would have said the same thing two mm. years ago but because of my relationship with Aaron and how oh, no. all we do is pass each other YouTube videos, now it's like, oh, whenever I like want to eat, I'll just go, I'll just put put a YouTube video on because there's so <laughs> many different YouTube channels that we like to watch now, yes. and I'm just like, oh, well, I could watch this while I'm working, or I could concentrate really hard on how May is dyeing her hair and goes to the salon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Like on my YouTube recommendations, it, it's it's very chaotic right now. I feel like if anybody <laughs> looked at it, it would Did, give them like major stress. Does it look like a like a public library computer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> also, it doesn't help that my mom this weekend was watching YouTube on my iPad, so oh. now it has her recommendations in there too. Yeah, it throws the so whole like, system out of whack. Exactly, like as if it what like had any whack left. <laughs> it's even it more like, out of uh, whack. Netflix before profiles. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I get the most random bullshit. It's, it, I hadn't it, thought about it in a while, but sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I'm just saying my YouTube recommendations is embarrassing. Please don't ever look. <laughs> nah, it's just, it's you, and that's important. Oh, I'm embarrassing. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> it's I like, to be nice. It's like your your YouTube DNA. It can't be oh, replicated. Yeah. Oh. Well, Thanks, I mean, they're working on I it. I think. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that was going. Yeah. Anyways, continue. Yep. I I, just, I hadn't thought about it until you said that, Issa, but like I am realizing that yeah, my my go to is YouTube. And then, you know, like Netflix and of course HBO Max and uh Hulu <laughs> and all true. that. Like that's like I I will go to those, but that's usually more of a like an event. Yeah. Not like literally, but like I'm gonna watch this specific thing, but like if I'm the just like movie looking for something to watch. Year kind yes. of thing. Is that yeah. 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 But if I'm just like, oh, I need something to watch, I just go to YouTube yeah. and hit refresh four times until something looks interesting. There, it's yeah. it's like when you open the fridge door and close it, and then you open it again, and you hope that something's different. It's like that's what YouTube <laughs> is for me. It's just yeah. so easy, and I I just I've now understood. I I know the power of YouTube, and I've been knowing it, but now it's just like all encompassing. <laughs> yeah. I I hate. Overlords. Cause I like, I feel like the, the algorithm is like a, 
uh, a buzzword or it's like a, it's almost like a, a, a not good thing a lot. And I, you know, for, I know for creators, it's not the best a lot of times. Yeah. Uh, it does work kind of scarily sometimes where like mm -hmm. all I have to do is watch one video and then I get other videos that I actually genuinely am interested yeah. in watching and I yes. hate it. Yes. I hate it. <laughs> and, but then I still watch them. It knows you better than you know itself. Yeah. Uh, it's scary. you know yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I started watching this, uh, this like, uh mario and zelda i mean just a bunch of like a speedrunner uh and like I, I can't remember like like i was watching some uh like i watch a lot of like uh like game history videos or like game theory videos or like did you know gaming like that kind of stuff mm. um and then i guess i got recommended this from a zelda video and then i found a video where like the guy played like he played all of mario odyssey blindfolded oh fuck uh, oh cool and so i just started going this rabbit hole <laughs> and now i'm like subscribed to this guy within the course of 24 hours just because they recommended one video to me it's like oh fuck, this works this works it, oh, it God, does it does yeah the um i for me the upside for like youtube algorithm working is that it's like the one upside is that it depends it definitely depends on like the content that you have and for me i like watching a lot of um youtube video essayists or uh, film critics mm -hmm. like essay and stuff mm -hmm. like that uh media or i should say media or medium um but i found a couple who are not super duper popular they only get like you know 13 15 000 views maybe like fifty thousand, which is still good but like you know mm -hmm. it's not like six digits but uh they're up my alley and uh they make such good content and i'm like oh man i like these people they Ooh, think do you really have cool. recommendations isa let's get them as guests yeah let's, let's, <laughs> I, I was gonna say let's talk about them so they get more views but that works too Both. that's true uh i may have mentioned this one person in another episode I think you did lady lady and the lady brave in the night oh I, that's I, right because oh yeah we said it's yes. it sounds like a band yeah <laughs> lady knight and the brave i think um yeah like the best part about her videos is that like, they're like a solid hour. So mm -hmm. really it's just, uh, yeah, Aaron knows. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's another uh, channel. I'm pulling up my subscriptions right now. I think they're called, or they're eh, point, beep bop, beep bop. <laughs> if you do the computer noises, uh, it makes your computer go faster. You need to restart Isa. <laughs> boop, beep, boop, boop. <laughs> Um, the user is channel is called Yara Zaid, uh, Y H A R A Z A Y D. Um, and I like their stuff. They had a video recently that was Holes and the Prison Industrial Complex because <laughs> Holes is an amazing book and an amazing movie, and it deserves I'm an in. essay. <laughs> uh, and how Holes like ended up talking, or she covers how like Holes is actually, uh, ends up uncovering the whole idea of like how there's an, a prison industrial complex period on how prisons do not actually like rehabilitate they're just using labor or like free labor for um mm. redemption or like just under this basis of like uh, as they say in the movie building holes builds character or digging holes <laughs> builds character i should say and it's like that's a lie and i'm like okay that's it that's that's the essay it's pretty good thanks for listening <laughs> I'm sorry, halfway through that, I just started thinking about present day Shia LaBeouf writing and directing and starring in oh, no. a modern take on Holes, and I got very excited. I would definitely watch that. Right? Day, day one, midnight show. Day one. Yeah. I would, I would like, I would like kickstart it. I would like, I'll do anything. I will do anything, Mr. LaBeouf. LaBeouf. Just, Mr. just LaBeouf. do it. Have you guys just watched do Honey it. Boy? Is that Honey Boy? No. No. Honey but... Badger? I heard it's really, really good. The yeah. concept of that movie breaks my brain. If That's I'm the understanding thing. Understanding it correctly. I, I've been avoiding a lot of shows or movies that might. I guess that's not entirely true. That I was going to say that are depressing or can make you depressed because the world is already, you know, yeah, yeah. the world is enough. Most of us part two. Yeah, <laughs> I, that, I, I, that's what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, but uh, yeah, I, I lost my train of thought there. What were we talking about? <laughs> honey Boy. So, uh, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. So, oh, yeah, honey that, the Boy? That, that movie just sounds a little too real, the concept of it, of like him playing his, his dad, dad and yeah. like how that affected his childhood and all that Whoa. kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's like I'm a like, weird autobiography, but yeah, he's like playing his dad. So I'll, I'll say that. You know, I, I was like, I don't want to watch anything depressing like that. So instead, I watched Japan Sinks. <laughs> <laughs> that was any better. 
<laughs> I'm, I, they're like, so we talked about it. It wasn't last week that we talked about it. Like, yeah. there, there's so many people have recommended it, and I'm just like so afraid. Me it's, too. I, 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 wish, mean, I wish we had Pocket Wad when we were talking about it the other week. Let's just yeah. talk about it again. Yeah. I don't want to, we're going to bully wanna, you. I don't want to repeat anything that might have been said. No, no, I want to hear your opinions on it. I mean, yeah. Just a general, you, or your you general should, thoughts. Yeah, I mean, you should not go in thinking that it's not going to be depressing because it is. It is really depressing, but it's meant to be that way. Like I, mm -hmm. it's like, it's one of those things where I don't know if you like. It might just not be your thing if you don't enjoy disaster, uh, disaster movies or shows. You know, like it's. Uh, but I really like the characters. They they feel very real throughout the circumstances, mm -hmm. and then everything is worth it to lead up to the ending the yeah, ending is just mm. like that's the thing you gotta be willing to put in the the work and the pain of yeah. the whole show which again it's not like the whole thing is just depressing and pain yeah yeah uh, there are definitely like upbeat moments and mm -hmm. like these small like shining bits of like life that is like worth like working towards or living yeah for. and they're they're great they're like beautiful moments like uh yeah. but but it all the ending would not be as good and like it wouldn't hit you as hard if you didn't go through all the mm -hmm. the difficult situations that i guess that that family goes through and yeah mm -hmm. by the end i was just crying like i was just like what this thing is it's <laughs> like it's it really is beautiful by the end but it, yeah definitely wow. and it yeah. is like a a disaster movie but it's very different because i'm not a disaster movie fan by any means mm -hmm. but i definitely think like um their interpretation or i guess like uh, their take on the genre is way different than like a western take that's or, like, yeah, it's sure. like it's not an action movie or anything like that it's definitely like a character driven piece i suppose mm. yeah and it takes it takes a situation like it, it also doesn't make them overly dramatic like you you would think some of those scenes could be like you could melt them for everything they have like oh family tragedy oh my god but it kind of <laughs> it kind of deals with those situations in a much more I don't even know how to describe it because I don't want to say realistic. I don't think that's the right way mm -hmm. to put it, but it's mm -hmm. it's a uh... grounded. Yeah, I guess more grounded. It just feels mm -hmm. it just feels more real. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, it also I just like how hopeful it was. It felt like the anti because I guess it's the same guy that made a uh, crying Double. man. Cry <laughs> crying man. No, Double yeah, no, no, man. No, no, no wait, no, Isa, don't do it. Isa, what is it, Paco? Devil man, cry baby. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Crying cry <laughs> man, devil baby. Crying man, evil bro. Sad boy, sad boy, red face. <laughs> but it feels like the it feels like the opposite of that show yeah. to me, or at least from what I remember, because that show ends very. I don't very, know. Very very dark. Yeah, very it, dark uh, and very negative about life. Yeah, and very. Yeah. It, it just is... feels like the opposite. It's like life is worth living for and it's beautiful mm -hmm. and it's messy but it's worth it kind of thing I'm yeah gonna, that's right i think that's a so, perfect way to put it yeah you gotta break a few eggs to, to sink tokyo <laughs> it's not just tokyo oh, you, unfortunately you just, <laughs> oh, you no. just spoiled the whole spoilers thing. <laughs> the egg, the egg sinks. that so that actually reminds me there's this term i learned um uh recently and it was great because it was uh, fun fact, Carrie, you had retweeted about recorded by RSL and someone mm -hmm. else had um, responded to this and I responded to this person like, holy cow, th what a great term. They described the show as hope punk. H-O-P-P-U-N-K, uh, -P -P right? And I was like, wait, uh... what the hell is hope punk? So I had Googled it at that time and I fucking love it. And of course, I sent it to Austin Hardwick as well because I knew he would love it. <laughs> of course. Um, and the term hope punk, yeah, it up? was coined by Alexander Rowland in 2017 to describe genre fiction that is the opposite of the grim, dark, everything sucks and is terrible mentality. Oh. So they're not specifically climate focused uh, and they don't necessitate hopeful worlds. But the idea mm -hmm. of hope punk is people uh, who are trying to find the best out of very bad situations. And sometimes what can be described as hope punk are people who are fighting against the system. So mm. they would, there's like a way to describe like handmaiden's tale. That's, that could be hope punk because it's a group of people who are in the system and they're trying to actively fight against it. Right. Mm. Or um, holes. Or holes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say holes is very topical nowadays. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. I, it was ahead of its time. <laughs> do y'all think that movie holds up? You should. 
Does it hold up? Does it not? <laughs> no, I don't. Um... <laughs> I I appreciate the effort that went into that joke. I will always appreciate the effort of right. trying to make other people laugh. <laughs> we gotta. Uh, Paul, this doesn't happen very often. We do to, like we got to restart the show now. Uh, hey, everybody! Welcome Scrap to I Have Notes, uh, a, a Hope Punk podcast. Uh, the Hope Punk podcast. All about uh, this is my Shia LaBeouf fan cast. Uh, please, Shia, make holes too uh, deeper. Uh, hey, you're honey boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. What the fuck were we talking about? Hope punk. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, Japan. <laughs> That's sinks, a cool term. You, yeah, you guys talking about Japan things makes me think like, oh wow, there, there. I think there is like this really interesting movement going on in media where a lot of people there. There has been. I, I guess that is like the primary difference between like Devil May Cry Baby versus Japan Sinks, right? Um, uh, some one that has been adapted or, or is an adaptation of something, but also the point of that narrative is very strongly rooted in like these characters and their journey specifically. And that does, does not necessitate a good ending per se. Mm. Um, but Japan sinks and in a way, like a lot of the other stuff that we've been like really wanting to ingest uh, is about like being hopeful or being positive, mm -hmm. even in the face of like disaster. So just want to put that out there, everyone, that this is a great so term. So Lord of the yes. Rings is <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Cool. I'll take it. Maybe, are we just yeah. boiling any sort of conflict that our heroes have to fight against as being <laughs> <Hope Punk>. now? <laughs> well, I mean, like Deku always like faces yeah. hardship head Hope on. Punk. That's kind of Hope Punk. Punk. Okay. Maybe there's just a little bit of Hope Punk in everything. <laughs> it's true. Inside yourself. Speaking <laughs> speaking of, of everything, is do you think there's any Hope Punk in Rick and Morty? <laughs> oh maybe i, I heard I don't, know put, I don't know who put this on the topic sheet i i, I put heard, it on i oh, heard Aaron. the short is pretty hope punk actually considering yes. some of the reviews about it what short are you talking it's, about it's the rick and morty versus genocider wow. short film by takashi sano who i guess worked on tower of god cool and it Best looks hope. pretty sweet i i'll be honest i don't care for rick and morty but this short was what? pretty freaking cool. Yeah, no, I'm how, sorry. How can you not? I, I you can watch it now like... on HBO Max, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it, yeah, it just looks, it's just visually cool. I don't think you have to be a fan to enjoy it. No, you it. don't. Oh, it yeah, very much looks like the the like super professional version of like the uh, I mean actually to be fair that one looked pretty professional too, but of uh, like when the, the people that make like the SpongeBob anime intro. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which uh, like I want to tangent into done. that later, but yeah, this looks awesome. It is very really interesting, yeah, because yeah, Rick and Morty is like I guess puppet animation, um, and this is very much the opposite. Mm -hmm. Like it's overly animated. It's <laughs> it's quite oh, tasty okay. to the eyes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where, so my uh, eyes are happy. They're what, what part? What part of the eyes has the taste buds? Do you, is it is it on the iris? Yes. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yes. yes. That, Every there, time I touch my eyeball, it is a little bumpy. <laughs> there, there's a little mouth in the center. Exactly. Like, uh. you know, like, it's like, mmm, umami. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. What does umami look like? Is it this? <laughs> oh, no. No. I don't like this. Have you guys um, heard of the uh, SpongeBob anime, by the way? Yes. As no. in, like, the actual first episode that someone released uh, no, recently. No, actually. Oh, man. I just All remember right. seeing somebody making, like, a bunch of, like, if, if SpongeBob was an anime, like, intros. I think it was, it could have been that same person. I think it is. Yeah. That's amazing. Like, wait for I, would definitely, it. I would definitely watch an anime first. Is SpongeBob. it good? Oh. Oh, man. Okay. I, I still like... can't tell. <laughs> I still can't tell based on what you're saying. Well, okay. So the history is, I was, I was, I, ha I was... I was made to watch it. Like, um, they sat me down. Uh, I, I wouldn't have watched it by choice, but they sat me down. Did they have a gun to your head? Oh, so funny. <laughs> watch and, it. Uh, I put it on. I put it on Discord, and um, I love that. And it is wild. They actually got oh, like a legitimate like Japanese voice actors oh, to voice wow. this one, and. I I I don't think I enjoyed it, but I appreciate the shit out of it. <laughs> you know what? That's valid. Yeah, that's that can be enough. 
I respect it. I respect it. Like, <laughs> so is, can I guess? Is SpongeBob like the the plucky plucky protagonist? Patrick's kind of like the dumb, goofy friend, and Squidward's like the Sundare. No. What? what? Yes. All okay. your expectations have been flipped. <laughs> yeah. All right. How hope punk is this? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, there he is. So there this is look very ho punk, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is. Oh, this is gonna be our, our sixth, our sixth member now. Yeah. Whoa, Anime where's Stash Chan? Chan? I haven't seen him in a while. Still yeah, yeah Paco, there Stash is actually a, a fifth member there in every episode. Is. It's Stash Chan. <laughs> All right. What's you up, might notice. Man? You might What's notice up? the facial hair uh, <laughs> is interesting. I, I see it. I... Uh, yes, yeah, so he's always here and watching. Yeah. That's that's so, good to uh, know, I guess. What, yeah, and now that you've been on the show, that applies to just like the rest of your life as well. What's uh, what's his deal? What's uh, what's going on with? with Can him? I be honest? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he was. We in... saw him in a trailer for something. Yeah, and we're like, we saw him in a trailer. Chan. We like this a soccer guy. anime video game. Yes, He's just yeah. there, like a dog oh, yeah. watching down upon us. <laughs> oh, Paco, yeah. you might be interested in the said anime soccer video game. Yes. Jordan Cap Swears was also Captain, very into it. Captain Tsubasa? Tsubasa. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, hell yeah. I, I, don't <laughs> Whoa, know it. Okay. I don't know it by that name, but I definitely know the show. I grew up watching that. That's right, right because that was really big in Mexico. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, you know, all the How soccer all the soccer people were into it. But, uh, yeah, it was called, I guess it literally translates to Super Champions. Nice. And, okay. uh, yeah, I, there's... I love that show. Like whenever I saw the announcement for that and just the look of it, I it was a nostalgia trip like like no other. It's yeah, it's I'm excited. They're also coming up with a Did you say they're making a new anime or did you say they're making it's a, a new game? game? Yeah, the, the game looks it, it looks amazing. I could not <laughs> I don't know if I communicated this, but I'm excited for it. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm glad. Maybe you too can play a stash chan or <gasps> We, he was in the crowd, so we don't know what his involvement is. Oh, that's where. Oh, that he does look familiar. He is from. He does look <laughs> like that. Yeah. He uh, he definitely looks unique. Yeah, I will say that much. So no, he's 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 my bro. We're, we know right. each other. We we have we have history. Okay. Okay. I was hoping that if one of our powers goes out while we record this, I was hoping oh. that broadcast could put Stash, Stash Chan in Chan. our place. <laughs> yeah. That's Tag team. a great idea. That's a great idea. Mike so if that happens, notes right now. that happens in the next 30 minutes. Now we know. We'll, we'll still... move on without them and Stash Chan can take their place yeah, until their exactly. power comes back. Yeah, still no go on without me. On my area, so it seems I to be avoiding me. Yeah. I think so. If you guys don't mind, I think now would actually be a great time to hit up some questions. Let's do got. it. Let's awesome. do it. I was just about to segue. Segue. <laughs> segue. Uh, segue. Segue. I have to shout oh, segue every time. <laughs> I really, I really miss hanging out with you guys in person. Aww. We miss you we too. We miss you, Paco. That's, that's honestly what this show's turned into. It's just an excuse just to like hang out for <laughs> an hour a week. I'm all, I'm all for it. Yay. So Questions. let's hit this one up. This is from Flippy Super. Um, how do animated productions receive criticism? I'm sure they listen to complaints from the company, but does the fan criticism influence the writing and decisions as well? Constructive, of course, not just people screaming about dumb stuff. That is a very important last sentence because you really have to differentiate between what is considered constructive and uh, what is not. Mm -hmm um but yeah how do animated productions receive criticism and whether or not fan criticism influences right uh, i just i i close my eyes and i i do this and I go, <laughs> I know, pretend it's all there nye, 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 nye. No, i mean <laughs> i mean you know i don't speak for everybody but i mean yeah we we i think we definitely like listen mm -hmm. and and hear everything um you know I, I think it's a balance of i mean i think we've talked about this a little bit before it's like that's true it's a it's a balance of uh, learning and also staying true to like what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think there's a good answer. I mean, I, I think that there's some, you know, there can be things that are like objectively could be better, and there's some things that could subjectively be better mm -hmm. or different. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, I think it's just about finding out like what what you want to do. I don't know. It's a uh, it's tough. Yeah. Can I ask you guys something based on that sure. question? Yeah, go for it, Focus. Like the question, you know, states obviously without reading all the just negative stuff of people yelling, but I feel like 
you know, I can only speak for myself, but if I was in that position as someone who can be pretty insecure and just kind of takes everything to heart, I feel like that would be difficult for me to do that. Like, you know, actively, objectively, you're like, oh, you know, I want to try to avoid people who are just here yelling, but how do you form the discipline, I guess, to know, to recognize those comments and to be able to get past them versus the ones that mm. act, actually yeah. seem like uh, genuine ones? Because that seemed to me, I feel like that would be difficult to say the least. Uh... I'm hoping someone else has an answer because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have an answer if I don't if it's good. <laughs> well, let's hear it. <laughs> uh, I mean, basically, if I see a comment and it doesn't offer a way to possibly correct a whatever, like, I want to say like uh, something that's like broken or they didn't like, etc. Um, like if they don't like say like, hey, I I don't like X character, and they don't say why or how to fix it, like. That I'm not gonna pay as much of attention to, yeah. or mm -hmm. like implement that feedback because, like, if you don't tell me how or why, then I'm not gonna know how to fix it. Yeah, but that's yeah. just that's yeah. Just when there's one, no point just sitting there, just realizing way. like, yeah. oh, one sense. person didn't like it, but they didn't say why. Yeah, it's like I I don't like Ruby, and it's like okay, cool. Okay. I bye. I do. <laughs> yeah, go, yeah. Go go somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't watch it. I don't know. Shut up. <laughs> yeah i i mean isa what about i mean like you know you we're in the middle of uh recorded by arzal being aired like how how are how are you feeling about receiving oh. criticism and content and comments in general about something that you've created from your heart and soul <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that's an accurate description it is uh it is a process i think is the biggest thing um that you kind of have to go through uh of course it takes a lot of time um to build up that ability to um differ discern between what are just kind of hate comments or people who just like want to say shit versus mm -hmm. people who will actually be like legitimately i do not understand and you can tell at least because of the internet like from their language mm -hmm. why if if this is something that you should engage in yeah, um definitely. but in terms of like taking crit or like looking at it if whether or not it's constructive for me a lot of it is at the moment in relation to recorded by rsl there are some moments of like people who have crit criticism uh, that may be constructive or they try to say something about it that I think to myself oh well I wonder if their opinion will change when they see the whole thing like mm -hmm. I feel like that's something that I tend to view in terms of criticism or the way that I would rather criticize or critique something is I would rather see the whole and then make it an argument from there as opposed to just trying to do one in the middle of an entire like series or thing yeah. and if I decide to drop a, a show just because I didn't like it in the middle of it then I can say well I have my problems with these but I dropped the show so you know your mileage may vary it's like having that context in there um but I think the thing that I like kind of I want to, if, if I can't find something out, then I tend to talk it out with someone else. Mm -hmm. um, there's this one comment, uh, putting on blast, don't know if it's appropriate. Let me know if we should edit this out. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Edit this out if need be. <laughs> uh, there's this one comment uh, that was saying something like, uh, they did preface that, that, you know, recorded by RSL wasn't for them, but they tried sure. to logic it. I think in like, you know, she just needs to get outside of the room. It's like, it's just not for me. Like this, uh, this show breaks the fundamental like writing rule of like show don't tell. And my first thought, like, and I had to talk it out with a couple of people on this one because I was just like, there's something about this that seems so misinformed to me. Mm -hmm. And one, it's only, there's only three episodes out, you know? So mm -hmm. until this person sees the fourth uh, prelude, fourth prelude blog, then what will they think after that? Like, will they go, oh, I was wrong? Or um, the other part of that too is that Recorded by RSL is a vlog. So inherently, if you're saying the show is breaking show don't tell, the idea of a vlog is that you're telling in the first place. Like, yeah. that, that's, the, that's the format. So just say you, you just, I mean, and this person, like I said, said mm -hmm. they didn't like 
they, the show wasn't for them. That's great. But I think having the communi- having the ability to understand like and having a grasp of language to appropriately critique, critique and just say, I just don't like the format is which really is okay. different, yeah. which is okay. And that is different than trying to say, this person just needs to go outside and it has to be a different <laughs> format for me to be into it. Like, I, I think there's a difference between yeah. the, those two. Things. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, yeah. For, for me, it, uh, uh, it changes daily. Uh, I mean, you talk about like just another comment that like, uh, th- th- there are some days where like, I'll read something negative, uh, and I'll just go like, man, fuck that. I'm just going to go, I'm going to go work now and I'm going to make the show even yeah. better. Mm. Uh, and there's some days where just like, it ruins my entire day. And I see some, like somebody says like, yeah, I can't remember exactly what the phrasing was, but basically somebody said, oh, I only watch the show now to bully the show and the people who like it. Oof. Like that was literally what they said. I'm like, well, okay. And then, you know, depending on the day and the mood I'm in, either that, you know, destroys me for the day mm-hmm. or I just kind of feel bad for them. That's what I was mm-hmm. going to say. That makes that me that's where their life is. Bro, you're living, person. You're mm-hmm. living rent free in their head. Yeah. <laughs> like they're wasting their own time. Like. I don't know. That's how I would. And you're yeah. still and you're still consuming the show and her product. Yeah, you're still giving you know. us views. Yeah, <laughs> you're it's, like hate uh, watching it. Yeah. It, so. Yeah. I don't know. I. Well, that's why I asked. You know, because it's. I mean, I feel like it's easy to just say, well, you know, I just don't look at the negative comments and whatever. But it's like, yeah, you were you're a human being, and when you're making something creative, like you, like Isa said, that comes out of her soul and her heart. It's like <laughs> you you can't just be objective about everything Mm -hmm. i guess Mm. like or at least it's difficult to try to be objective about Mm -hmm. you know that one person Mm -hmm. i i I don't know like it's not for them right and that it just kind of stays with you and i guess it's just interesting for me now and the age of the internet how that works out like because i always wonder like when i was a kid like what if i could contact the people making pokemon when i was a kid (laughs) Like, I don't know if that would be the best thing in the world for me. Mm, mm -hmm. You know, it would. Yeah, it wouldn't for anybody involved. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I (laughs) there's I like just to be up front as well. There's (laughs) (laughs) to be up front on this one. There's we're not uh, we're not saying criticizing media is bad. Like, no. I, oh, I no, no, no. think there absolutely exists a sphere. Like, all of that is completely valid. And, like, it needs to happen because I think having a better understanding and having a uh, having that knowledge to look at the thing that you're uh, ingesting, I guess, or, like, kind of, like, mentally really parsing it down, I think that's really important. Um mm-hmm. But I also really like. I, when, I but wish... when Poopy Butthole sixty nine says, "I hate you and your family for making the show the way you did," I I I don't take them seriously. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's, I might it's... I'm gonna look at what they're saying and and like put that on like you know okay there's another tally for somebody who didn't like that arc or something like that. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not gonna you know if they have a, if they're like yeah just have them go outside and be like no whatever you know like I don't know <laughs> I. I'm a per- I'm a person too, and I have limits. Yeah. I think also. Poopy butthole sixty nine putting you on blast. <laughs> <laughs> I think going off of that, I feel like not to make not to say that like we don't look at like criticism or like address them mm-hmm. because we definitely do. We do, uh, and I sometimes see comments saying like, "Oh, Rooster Teeth doesn't listen to their fans." Uh, like we see like so many of y'all's comments, but a lot of times it's just like depending on like where we are in production or like the direction, like Carrie said, like the direction y'all want to go in, like sometimes it's just not feasible to like implement that feedback. Yeah. So I think people sometimes forget, like there's a whole like production cycle that a show has to go through. So it's not just as easy as like, well, we want Ruby to have blue hair now. Like we can't just like (laughs) easily go back and like redo all this. Mm -hmm. So. There's some. There's somebody right now typing a comment about how you could probably go back. <laughs> yeah, I know. Within oh, the I'm, span of like twenty four hours, sorry, and it's like, 
They're all big brained. Bigger brain than me. Bigger brain. As Paco said, like, you know, it's it's hard it's it's difficult and uh to be objective uh in this case. And I think Lindsay Ellis, um, in her video uh video essays, she talks about death of the author and that like literary concept of the idea of being able to separate art from artist and like its mm -hmm. content. And sometimes the reality is that sometimes a lot of content wouldn't exist without the artist and the context. So in that way, can you really objectively criticize a piece of work based on the idea of death of the artist uh, yeah. or death of the author? So like, that's something I always think about because it's just like, yeah, there's so much context and it, it really is kind of like how you kind of just like look at it and understand the context of like, um, uh, the way that people are telling you a criticism sometimes too. It's just like, ah, mm -hmm. well, within this context, I don't need to take that versus within this context. I think that's a fair point. <laughs> yeah. That's my answer. Thanks yeah. for the question, Paco. We, we talk a lot about criticism, but I think it's because it's a really important thing that we're still like going through. <laughs> yeah, I don't think like... there's ever going to be like one answer of how to deal with criticism. Well, that's yeah. the thing, right? It, it it comes with it. You're putting something out there. People are going to watch it. Some people are going to like it and some people are not going to like this. It, it comes with it. I, so it's just part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, thanks for all your answers, you guys. That was, mm -hmm. that was cool. Yeah. Do, you think, do you think we have time <laughs> yeah. for one more question? Yeah. yeah. I, I was like thinking, questions. Issa, that, uh, there's a, that one about different parts of productions, I think could be good for, for Paco too. Cause he's kind of, Yes. Done a Paco, good amount of things on the show, <laughs> on, on the on, in the department. Paco, what's your job? I thought you were we just asking we me. We didn't that. ask you at the beginning. Yeah, that's oh. true. Yeah, I'm a. I'm oh a no, I'm a bad host. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a producer, I guess, in general terms, which can mean a lot of things. Uh, currently, you make a, a, a hip hop beats. Ooh. That's right. That's <laughs> 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 I was about to try to make a joke out of that, but I literally got nothing. So, uh, DJ Vasquez. <laughs> uh, so that's see, that's already more than what I had. But no, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a producer. So currently, I'm focusing on uh, just motion capture, which has been a challenge during pandemic world. But we mm -hmm. are still uh, rolling with the punches or whatever the phrase is. Hey. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and in the past, I've also been part of i used to produce the layout team on ruby i used to produce the uh animation team on ruby for a long time mm -hmm. so yeah i guess in general terms being a producer means that you know overall or whatever department you're working on specifically it's just about making sure that whatever show you're working on gets uh, made correctly and i guess what that means is that it it looks and sounds as good as it can under budget or with the budget that we are given and however much time we are given which is uh a very complicated uh what do you call it sorry my Balance. english uh juggling act yeah you know what I'm saying? yes yeah yeah, yeah. You got sorry it. my i've been spending a lot of time with family so my my english is kind of not the best <laughs> um that's really interesting yeah but uh anyway so yeah and that whole time there's some creative person uh a lot of times me being like but no <laughs> but that, that's so that's that's the balancing act i guess what i'm trying to say right it's like mm -hmm. we we all wanted the everybody involved in the show uh hopefully <laughs> wants the show to be as good as it can be mm -hmm. yeah. and uh the the trick is to make that happen with limitations because otherwise i mean anybody that likes working on this stuff if we all could spend our whole lives or years or just more time than when we are given on it we would, mm -hmm. but uh, so yeah. So normal. Sometimes I can make the producer like make the people around production kind of someone be the. You kind of have to act as the bad guy, I guess. I, I don't like thinking uh -huh. of it that. I don't like the thinking of it that one. way. Yeah, I guess the the party pooper, right? Because the the realist. Yeah, because yeah. like I said, it's uh, everybody, including myself, would want to keep working on these things for as long as we possibly can to make them as cool as possible. But the, uh, you know reality comes in and it's like oh we have i don't know two months to finish the thing and this much money so we have to 
do that. So that's what a producer does. They make sure that the the budget and the schedule part of things is going along well with the creative part of it. And it's very it can be very difficult to keep that from turning into uh, keeping creative from being creative, which is ultimately what that's what they're there to do. What's the, what they're supposed to do. So I feel like a, a very good team is a a creative and a producer that know each other very well. They know themselves very well so that they know where to push or where to try to have a conversation about things because these, mm -hmm. and sorry, if I'm going off too long, definitely tell me. No, please. No, please, I think please. it's very uh, insightful. Cause Paco, you're our special guest. <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> not being awkward. Awesome. Uh, so, you know, like, I guess part of it too, that makes it complicated is that you're always dealing with different issues. It's not like you're like every season of the show, you're like, well, we know what to expect and nothing else is going to happen. It's like every, every year of, I'm not even going to say every, every show, every season of every show, for whatever reason, brings its own set of challenges for creative and production. And mm -hmm. that's where the real production work and the magic happens, I guess. It's like getting a compromise that makes everybody happy where the show is going to look and sound as good as it possibly can while still coming in in budget and on time, which is it's a very difficult thing to do. Yeah. You know? I, I, I don't know that anybody knows how to do it perfectly because it's always a different show. But sorry, go ahead, Lisa. I was going to say, I think that's a, an interesting um, thing to bring up in that, like, uh, sometimes producers, uh, producers are problem solvers in all different ways. And sometimes producers also have to creatively come up uh, with solutions for creative yeah. um, because some, there'll always be a situation where there has to be something cut. Uh, mm -hmm. And sometimes like, like someone like me, a creative or someone like Carrie, Aaron, like whenever we like look at something, we'll always, we, there's always that one thought of what can we cut? This is everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything is so important. And it is, ultimately going to be up to the people who are presenting that problem or saying we have this problem we need their help to try and like focus on what is possible in order to make something that is still satisfactory so i think you paco say it's like you also had producers having to make sure that all parties are kind of just satisfied or happy with the product. I think that's also just as important on the producer, which means you guys have a lot on your plate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's definitely a, you know, it's, it's a complicated job, but it's also a lot of fun. I, I like working with a back and forth with creatives on that, like you said, the puzzle solving of it all. It's like every day, it's just like, how are we going to fix the situation where we can still deliver and everybody's happy, but but we can't do it the specific way or something like that. Like that's, that's where a lot of the most fun conversations and just problem solving happens. And, and a lot of the time that's, like you said, it's a combination of production, but also just creatives, like really getting into it. And sometimes that leads, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. Okay, good. All I was going to say is sometimes that leads to very happy accidents where you wouldn't have come up with something otherwise, unless you had to creatively, figure it out you know like my my main example for that is always like if the shark on jaws worked the way they wanted it to that movie would not be as the classic that it is today that's true yeah, um, yeah. yeah. now I, I just i feel like a lot of it comes down to um uh constant prioritization and reprioritization of what is important at the moment mm -hmm. it's you know the script says that there's going to be a b c and d and we realize that we only have time to do three things well, what are the three most important things? Or, you know, if we're not sure if we can get D done, well, let's work on everything else first and see if there's time left over to do that thing. And maybe we find out that like, yeah, that uh, artist hit their stride and they got it done faster than we thought. So they have time to do this D thing, or maybe, uh, you know, it could get circled back to or not. But, you know, it's, I, I think, you know, kind of what you're talking about that, that juggling act is just always figuring out what is the most important thing right now what is the thing that has to get done and what are the other things that would be nice to have and, and just like balancing that out. I think, uh, I feel like that's what it comes down to a lot as well. It, it, it feels like, like very big brain thinking. <laughs> yeah. Galaxy, the galaxy brain. brain. <laughs> galaxy brain. Uh, uh, galaxy brain. Uh, I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> I do. 
know. <laughs> well, because it's it's like a weird thing where it's like you, I feel like it's important to not micromanage, mm. but you also have to be like constantly adjusting. Mm. Yeah, and you know what? What I've learned about it too is that, and this is something that's taken a while to learn, is that, uh, you know, like most of the time, or at least for me, like you're working on these projects and you're working with a lot of people that that you like. You're working mm -hmm. with a lot of people that you, you enjoy working with each other. So when a, a situation like that comes up, I think it can be difficult to to kind of deal with it. If, if the people, like you, like I said, if the people don't already have a back and forth set up or like you kind of understand each other, because yeah. yeah, you need a trust, right? Because without that trust, if you have a producer who only cares about the budget and the uh, and the schedule, but doesn't care about the 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 quality of the content. Mm -hmm. then that's probably not going to lead to somewhere great. Or if you have it the, the other way around where you have a producer who doesn't really care about that and just lets creative do whatever they want, then that's probably not going to get done on time. So mm -hmm. I think you, it's, it's very important to develop that trust between production and creatives because otherwise it's almost like you develop a shorthand, you know, like you, you, you mm -hmm. kind of understand what each other is trying to say and do mm -hmm. and accomplish together, but also... Uh, you both should have the same goal, which is again mm -hmm. making the best possible version of the show that you're working on. And because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, at least in my experience, like I've I, I've seen people who or I care a lot about the shows that I work on, right? Like I, I care mm -hmm. about the characters, I care about the the plot or whatever. But when when you have if you have someone who potentially doesn't care that much about that, then it's a lot easier to I don't know be dismissive perhaps or just mm -hmm. wanting to wanting to do it the the easy way and I, I i've fallen into that trap myself you know just because it is is a complicated thing so I, i've had to learn how to talk to people and develop that trust and you know like not just come into the problem with the point of view of we have to finish this now no matter what like well no matter right. what it's not really an option mm -hmm. or it, it shouldn't be like it, it mm -hmm. does matter how we do it Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. so yeah that's 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 the fun but difficult part about it i guess <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, thanks right, for it's... sharing paco mm -hmm. yeah it's it's fun and difficult but also essential yeah. and rewarding when done right mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> for all you kids out there i always uh <laughs> i uh, uh I, I miss being able to actually mocap with you um it, yeah. These are always very fun shoots. I also feel like you're, uh, in, in a good way, like your uh, your live action experience comes out too when we mocap. Um, like yeah, no, like... it's it's super fun. I miss doing it too. And yeah, I mean, at least for me, I, I can speak for other producers, but for me, like, like I I like all aspects of filmmaking, right? So whether I'm producing mm -hmm. or part of something creative or just in the corner, like editing something, like it's it's all fun for me. So the the closer you get to be to all these different aspects of making something, which uh, as a producer, I've gotten to be part of a lot of uh, parts of the pipeline in animation. It's just also been a, a great learning experience. Like I would never have thought I would learn this much about animation when I first got out of school. Cause when I first, you know, when I was first getting into this kind of thing, I, I didn't ever consider animation as being an option. I was just like live action. That's what I know how to do. And that's what we're going to do. Sure. But, so yeah, it's also just been a fun learning experience that, uh, I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> oh, you're our guest. I know. You're I know. Talk. That's is, why you're here. I know. I feel awkward with all this stuff, but yeah. Anyways, it's cool. Thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> and, and for what's worth, I mean, like, Paco says. Uh, uh, you know, we we are still doing mocap. We're just doing a uh, a very interesting version uh, that involves one person going to the studio. Yep. Uh, and then at, at usually at least two other people, sometimes three. Uh, remoting in and running and directing the session for yep. that one person's in there by themselves. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. Which, if you, uh, if you had ooh. asked me if we were going to be able to keep ooh. doing mocap during work from home, I would have said no. But uh, we figured it out. And it's, yeah. again, that's part of production being a yep. producer. You kind of just have to, you get a, a problem that you literally have never dealt with before. And you, you just have to that, try to solve it and you know, it's not the perfect solution, but we came up with something that keeps us mm -hmm. working. So, and but that's, I, that's I, what's important. I do miss doing regular mocap with you and with everybody else. It's it's super mm -hmm. fun to do. Yeah. 
soon. YouTube Hopefully. Yeah, it's true. Well, I think with that, it's time to go to sleep. <laughs> right, okay. now. Right, right now. Right now. <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody, for watching another episode of I Have Notes. If you liked it, I mean, come on. It's Paco, Aaron, and Issa are here. Um, if you liked it, uh, please uh, subscribe and like and share and comment about uh, the liking. I have notes. Yay. Yay. Um, please watch it. Oh, God, please. Uh, <laughs> and also uh, check out the cool uh, uh, Select All shirts that uh, Aaron and Issa have. Um, they're very good. And they come in, as I say, a variety of colors. It's two colors. But I guess Aaron's just is kind of a bunch of colors. Mine is so. the pride version. <laughs> yeah. The pride. The pride um, version. And there's this like these ruby shirts that have eyes on them that are very cool. And then Paco <laughs> shirt's an exclusive. Exclusive. <laughs> Can't get it anymore. Can't get it. No more. Oh. Um, you got to email me and yeah. directly. <laughs> and also, please uh, keep watching Recorded by Arzal well, because it's very good. Thanks, Carrie. <laughs> that's my asmr friend support um <laughs> and yeah uh do we have a sign off no not really have a good week everybody bye bye